Argentina's president is refusing to budge in an international legal battle over billions of dollars worth of debt. Cristina Fernandez de Kirchner says she won't pay up despite losing an appeal at the U.S. Supreme Court. The dispute dates back to Argentina's financial collapse in 2001 when it was unable to pay its debts. Most investors have agreed a new deal with the government, accepting as little as $25 for each dollar spent. But a small group of U.S. hedge funds, known as holdout investors, refused and took Argentina to court to get their money. Argentina has failed in its appeals and has been ordered to pay $1.3 billion in cash. I think you need to distinguish between what is a business and what is extortion. I think these two concepts are completely different. All the government, all the country, all the directors in the areas of the environment and policies need to be open to negotiation. No president in a sovereign country can subject its country, its people, to extortion. Well, joining me now from London is Kawa Qureshi, an international law specialist. Good to have you with us. Uh, this has been quite a long-running uh, case, hasn't it, since 2001. What does this decision mean for Argentina? Does it now have to hand over $1.3 billion? Well, the, the, the context, as you point out, is uh, quite lengthy. There is the collapse of the Argentinian currency, the delinking with the dollar, and as a result, Argentina faced an onslaught of claims by many uh, private investors. I acted for uh, private investors in claims against Argentina with the result that there are dozens of outstanding judgments. Uh, the, the simple point is this, that the US Supreme Court decided on Monday evening that the lower court was right to require Argentina to pay out what you described as the holdouts at the same time as paying out the people who'd agreed to accept 25% of the face value of the bonds. The holdouts were entitled to the full face value plus interest, in addition to which the Supreme Court decided that uh, the courts were entitled to make orders against banks in New York to require them to disclose the whereabouts of assets held by Argentina in their other uh, accounts with those banks anywhere in the world. So those are the two points from the Supreme Court judgment, it which does are, seem, uh, seem to have... A Oh, sorry to interrupt you. I was going to say, it seems a little unfair that uh, the court judgment seems to be uh, rewarding those um, holdouts, as we're calling them, the ones who refuse to restructure the debt. I mean, that's what happens when there's a debt, isn't there, that it gets restructured. But this court ruling has undermined that concept. Well, that certainly is the position of the Argentinian uh, government and of the bondholders who comprise the 90 uh, three percent who agreed the restructuring in 2005 2010 but ultimately we need to look at what this is about this is really about a contract a bond instrument which contained provisions for payment and it contains provisions for jurisdiction pursuant to the bond instrument the argentinian government waived its immunity from the jurisdiction of the u.s courts it's waived its immunity from enforcement measures and what the supreme court has done is essentially confirm that insofar as argentina was making a claim for immunity it didn't exist because the claim for immunity is based upon the statutory framework in America from 1976, which is reflected virtually in every other country in the world, and also the contract that Argentina signed up to. It may be that in future states will be a little bit more careful as to what they sign up to, and it, there may also be ramifications for assets because the Argentinian government position was supported by the U.S. government. The U.S. government participated in the proceedings and urged the U.S. Supreme Court not to allow uh, the process which the bondholders, the holdouts were seeking to enforce because of the ramifications for U.S. international relations and also, no doubt, for the financial markets. OK, and uh, uh, finally, what, what is this going to mean for Argentina's economy? Because they've been in debt for a very long time now. Well, immediately in the aftermath of the U.S. Supreme Court judgment, you had the stock market drop by about 10%. Uh, but we mustn't forget, though, that uh, in fairness to Argentina, it has been trying to negotiate settlements for its debts. And it, the, the likely uh, scenario here is not that the NML slash holdout uh, bondholders will chase Argentina all over the world, but there's likely to be a settlement process, as has happened with virtually all of the other debts that Argentina owes as a result of the financial crisis. Kawa Qureshi, thank you very much indeed for joining us live from London there.